Hello and welcome back to another episode of Once a Warrior. My name is Monty Beetham and in the war with me today, my guest is the doctor, Jason Deeth. Doctor, how are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, Monty. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, mate, there's been a lot of fans out there that says, Dr. Deeth, I want to get them on. So uh, let the fans know where you are and what you're up to work-wise, man. So I live in the Northern Beaches in Sydney and um, you're probably well aware that I'm married to Ivan, Ivan Cleary's wife, sister, which is a vet. So... And we've got four boys over here on the Northern Beaches and I've got a gym called Concept 42 and life's pretty busy, let me tell you. Oh, it's always been busy, man. You're a great man uh, and I'm sure you live it with a passion. Uh, why the doctor? Well, um, actually, Gary Belcher gave it to me, the, the nickname back in uh, when I was at the Canberra Raiders. There was a, um, yeah, a doctor up in the Northern Territory that was performing uh, euthanasia and on the back, back page of the paper, it had Dr. Death. <laughs> and um, Gary Belcher came in one day and said, mate, your nickname's the doctor now, Dr. Death. Oh, it's stuck, mate. And I tell you what, it's funny how it all works out, mate. And the doctor sure had a fan club at the Warriors, and that's probably because of moments like these. Step up the middle, gets away. Deeth, a oh, strong defence, powerful defence there from the Warriors. Deeth with another brilliant run. Deeth and Dummy Hart. Deeth. Jason Deeth gets away. Great tackle, Chase Deeth. Crunching defence from Jason Deeth. Doctor, when you see those tries, when you see what you could do for this uh, club and that jumper, uh, what memories come to mind, man? Mate, well, I've got goosebumps now just watching those um, those tries. Mate, it was so much fun. Um, got to play with really good players like Stacey Jones, um, Arwen Gutenbill, and yeah, Ali Lawatiti, mate. Fantastic, mate. Awesome. Oh. Death, well, death row. I always say death because that was associated with you. Um, I remember seeing them up in the stands, but also you had your own club rooms. Now, talk about cult following, man. That doesn't happen. I don't think it's happened since, besides the go to South Stacey Jones. Do you remember that? Talk to me about the memories. Oh, I remember that they uh, had the death row, or death row, as you, you pronounce it. <laughs> um, the guys all dressed up in their Grim Reapers outfits. And they, uh, yeah, they were very supportive of me. There was a fair few of them, about 50 or so. And then um, after the games, we'd go back to the clubhouse and, and I'd get interviewed and talk about what what the game plan was and what we did at halftime and, and also, yeah, just talk about the game as in if we won, if we lost, how we can improve and, and so forth. Talk about the fan experience because they loved you, mate, on and off the field. Um, what did you enjoy about that? And did you expect it, Dithi? Oh, man, like, it was just, they're so welcoming and, like, so family orientated and, yeah, well, they brought me in as a as one of their own because I'm an Aussie, but, yeah, but I was in New Zealand and, yeah, just, I love the culture, I love the people, just the memories of looking across the other side of the, the stand and when the, that was packed and then just getting straight into it, especially when it was a wet, windy night or a cold, windy night there, there at Mount Smart. Or I've got some really good memories when we beat Newcastle Knights on this wet and cold, rainy night on a Saturday night, I think it was. And we, they had both John's brothers in the, in the team and, and I scored two tries and, and I just remember that that was one of my most favourite memories with the Warriors. Fan favourite. Uh, they absolutely loved you, but it had to start somewhere. So um, how did you come to the Warriors? Well, Mark Graham was the assistant coach up at the Cowboys with Tim Sheens. And uh, he, was in, he was there for the three years that I was there, Mark. And then he got the opportunity to um, coach over at the Warriors. And he said, come over, Doc, because I was playing a little bit of reserve grade and also because Steve Walters was uh, at the, the Cowboys in 98. And MG goes, mate, why don't you come over to the Warriors? We'd love to have a player like you. It wasn't a lot of conversations. Um, it was essentially one because I didn't have a, a, an opportunity in 98 to, or in 99 to go anywhere else. And so, and I knew Mark Graham because I lived next door to him. 
and we were close because we used to drive out to the, the ground together, out to the Cowboys ground. And we'd be, well, we're mates, essentially. So he said, come over and play because he said, we've got a big pack of forwards. And obviously me playing hooker, it does help in that regard. One of the markers on the ground and I'd scoot out of dummy half and make 10, 15, 20 yards in behind the ruck. And uh, yeah, it did help my football. Um, interesting you mentioned MG said, come over and play hooker because there's some, some big boys here. Um, talk about playing behind Bangana, Jerry Sioso and the rock, Terry Hermanson. Oh, The Rock, he's a legend. I'll never forget him playing against him when he was playing for the Roosters. And then I got to play footy with him. So remember how tough he was. Oh, my God. He was tough. And he, yeah, and he played on one knee. So one of his mm. knees was no good. So, we, yeah, he was, yeah, tough inside and out. Joey Vangana, he was solid and he always broke the first tackle. He was just... Yeah, he had blokes hanging off him. His post-contact metres, I reckon, were about at least 100 in the in a game. Your thoughts on Jerry C.O.C.? Oh, legend. Absolutely. I loved him. Jerry, Jerry, see you, see you, we used to call him. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd go, Doc, come on, give me a break. <laughs> no, fantastic guy. And he's doing a lot of good things with the, uh, the post, post-career. Mm with uh, the old Warriors. He's doing a fantastic job. Let's so. talk about MG for a while. I mean, uh, what a legend he was when he came over. And even uh, as a player and coach relationship, he always stood above us. He was a big man in great shape. Uh, what type of coach was he, man? Oh, mate, he was fantastic. He was hands-on, which is really good. Like he said, right, now, this is how you got to do it. And he'd, be, he'd teach you what to do and how to do it and how he used to do it because he was just a... He was a machine. I used to watch him when he played for North Sydney and also the Kiwis. He was just, we were scared of him as Aussies. You think he was a hard man? Because I remember a couple of times um, we had a, a boxing session. We're sitting down, had the gloves out, and Arwen went up to him and said, oh, what do we learn from this? And he said, nothing, it's just going to make me feel better, as he put the smoke back in his mouth and started puffing away. <laughs> tough guy. Yeah, he was a tough guy, mate. You didn't want to cross him, let me tell you. <laughs> He was a man's man. He'd look you in the eye and he'd shake your hand. And, um, yeah, no he, bullshit. He'd, he'd look down no at you. Bullshit. He'd look down at you while he shakes your hand. He, and he, had, the <laughs> yeah, biggest, exactly. he had the biggest smith, didn't he? <laughs> you came over with 100 games experience, part of the green machine, uh, also playing for the Cowboys. Um, what was your purpose when you came over? What did you want to do? I just wanted to teach the, you guys how we played at the Canberra Raiders. It was like you, you were committed in defence and making yeah, making every point a win, that you don't give up and you play for the full 80 minutes and also teaching kids, you, know, you, you younger guys especially, that this is what you've got to do to win footy games. Doc, I rem remember you coming over um, and, you know, hookers weren't as brutal as you were in defence. You could put a shot on, mate. And was that something that you learned from an early age? Why were you such a good defender? I just loved tackling and I loved it, yeah. I loved getting players and I'd look them in the eye and say, run at me, run at me. And I'd say, right, and then, but they wouldn't run at me because I was so short and because I'd do about 40 tackles a game. So I'd say, run at me, and then I'd cut them in half and then I'd just go, I'll get you, I'll got you, yeah. I'll got you. Well, it's pretty Love scary it. when you see this guy who's... You weren't the biggest um, player, but when you're saying, run at me, run at me, with your smile uh, and your eyes dotting up, <laughs> like that, uh, Dr. Deeth is, uh, is, is probably a little bit scary at times. But, like, you loved that yeah. contact, didn't you? Didn't shy away from it, whether it be with the ball in hand or even defensively. Yeah, I loved it. I just love playing footy. Like, if I... Yeah. If I didn't get paid for it, I'd still play because I just loved it so much. It was one of those games that just... Yeah. My passion. So Peter Leach, uh, so mm. much time for wonderful people and I know you two bonded. Um, when did you first meet? Because then you became um, almost like roomies. Yes, the butcher. Love him. And his wife, Janice. Um, well, he treated me like a son. Fantastic guy. I'll never forget the first time I met him. And he come up to me and he goes, come on, I'm going to fight you. And I'm thinking, who's this bloke? And I'm going, Jesus Christ, come on. Yeah, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to knock you out. I'm going, man, who's this guy? And someone said, oh, no, that's just a mad butcher. Yeah, and you'll get used to that. Don't worry. And I went, oh, fair enough. So, and then we became best mates from then on. And still friends today, like really good friends today. And when you lived with him, did he give you any advice on life or on how to play rugby league, man? Oh, I don't know about play rugby league. 
but advice, yeah. He was there to like this. I'd bounce things off him and say, right out, Butch, can um, you tell me what your thoughts on this are or <laughs> what your thoughts on that are? Or, um, yeah, we, we'd have our cup of teas on a Saturday morning and, and uh, have a chat. He was just, yeah, fantastic. Um, so what, what about early on uh, in, in terms of relationships with the players? I mean, who did you take a liking to straight away? And what were your initial thoughts, you know, coming from Canberra, coming from uh, the Cowboys, new country, new setup? What were your thoughts? Well, um, Lee Odenrein took me in. So I ended up staying him, with him and his wife. And he kind of showed me the ropes. He said, this is what, being an expat as well. Um, we had a great time. Gene Nami was awesome. Uh, Stacy was great, fantastic. Stacy's just the, the little master. I used to say the little master. I believe if you lived in Australia, you'd be an immortal. So that you'd, you'd be up there. Talk to me about Warangi Kopu. Warangi. Well, he ended up living with me and Maisie. So he was like a, a like he was like my little brother, so to speak. I went to his 21st and did the haka. Would you believe it was awesome? You could play hooker. You could play a lock just as well. Very effective in the middle of the field. What was your what was your preference, man? Where did you like to play or want to play? Uh, it was interesting because when I played lock, I played outside uh, John Simon, and he used to put me in a, a lot of holes, and I used to yeah score some really good tries or make some good breaks through those because he read the play like I read it. I did prefer hooker. Uh, I must admit, it was when Robbie Mears came over that he he went to hooker as after I broke my jaw. So I was out for six weeks, but so MG needed another player and he got Mearsy over. And we become really good mates. Like we'd run dummy half, he'd run dummy half out and I'd run the other dummy half and we'd make about 40 metres in the first three tackles and it was just fantastic for the team. And then Stacey would take over and, I mean, yeah, we were unbeatable. That combination you had with Mearsy was, was on. No doubt you both wanted to play hooker. Um, both yep. as competitive as, as anyone, because I remember Mezzi apologising to his legs before every concession. Sorry, lads, for what <laughs> I'm about to put you through. He was that type of bloke, uh, and he was yeah. so competitive like yourself. So early on, what was that like, that relationship? Because I, I have no doubt you both wanted to play nine. Um, yeah, but, but still, for the game, like for the for the team, you want to play for the team. It doesn't matter if you play nine or 13 or, yeah, what it, like as long as you're out there helping the team perform and win games essentially so yeah we well like i said we ended up living together and yeah he's one of my good mates so. yeah. but johnny yeah, simons well, came in straight away and um, he came with a reputation and experience and i'm just gonna say you know a bigger puku than most he had a, he had a big stomach <laughs> but the skill set that he brought was amazing and both he and yourself in terms of time that you would give to the young ones around like me was essential. What, what made Johnny Simon so good? Because not just that, he was, he was a captain there for a while too. Yeah, um, he, I think just he loved playing footy and he got the opportunity to play at the Warriors. And yeah, when, she, when you get over there, it's just a different, you feel loved over there because the, the whole, it's like one team, one country. And like everyone just loves you over there because you're, you're, you're playing footy for the Warriors and mm. that's phenomenal. And it just makes you a better player and makes you a better person. Doctor, you were given an opportunity to come in 1999. You took that opportunity. You were player of the year. What did it mean to be a player of the year in your first year? That was awesome. I wasn't expecting it because um, I had a, an injury. I broke my jaw and I was out for four to six. Oh, I was out for six weeks. Um, so me not playing the whole season and then I got player of the year was just phenomenal. I, I couldn't believe it. That's what I like yeah. about you, Doc. Um, you never let anything get in the way. If you want to do something, you do it and you do it well. I remember your broken jaw. You had the bands and uh, yes. you're trying to feed through a few drinks with a straw and sometimes your Kentucky as well. Uh, but we, <laughs> we, we still went out through that time and you still made sure that you enjoyed yourself because you love to dance, mate. The doctor. Yeah, I did. <laughs> can dance, can't sing. <laughs> Are you sure you can't sing? Yeah, no, I can't sing. Just ask my mum. <laughs> Sky City Tower, and we'd all get dancing till 2 o'clock in the morning, having the time of our lives. Oh, it was fun. Like, after every after-match function, was awesome. You were a, a big part. I think you played 21 games that year of the, the first team to make the final series for the first time in the club's history. Uh, the great memories of 2001 for you? 
Oh, it was really good because Daniel Anderson actually came and signed me up on the spot. And uh, I had a really good conversation with Daniel Anderson and ended up signing up for another two years, which was fantastic. Um, he was a good guy. Daniel was uh, smart. He was very smart and meticulous on what you wanted. he wanted you to do, play how to play footy and what, what, to, what to bring on the field, so to speak. He t- told me to think about more about how a run from dummy half, would you believe? Like no other other coach had ever t- coached that to me. He said, why do you run from dummy half when there was one guy down? Make sure you think about what's in front of you. Uh, eyes up, look up and, yeah, see what's in front of you rather than just do it because you, you, you they call a play and you, you've got to do it because you have to do it. Yeah, more thought into what you and on how you played, and we got into the semis, and everyone we just all celebrated so so good because we first team to make uh, yeah. the semi finals. It was so good, like it was a dream come true because we'd set that goal at the start of the year, and they, like you said, I played twenty one games, and to get into that semi final to to reach a goal like that. For especially from the, the the year before when we didn't we didn't make the semis or we didn't I think we might have come close to the, down the bottom of the, mm. the, the ladder, and then Daniel's come in and, and he's changed all the systems and the processes and and we set goals and 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 then we made our goal like we set out we set a goal and then we achieved it. It's just so enlightening. It's fantastic mm. and also to do it with the Warriors, like a team that they say is yeah that's struggling all the time. Doc, uh, you're a big part of the team in 2001, um, but when you left, why did you leave? Uh, could you see that the club was going to be successful in the next coming years? Uh, actually, really good question, because uh, uh, Daniel Anderson uh, brought PJ Marsh over, so and he said that I'll be playing a, a more or less a lot of uh, reserve grade, lower grades, and it was actually uh, fortunate that the South Sydney Rabbitohs had got let back into the comp and yeah, and I and I spoke to the South Sydney Rabbitohs, and they gave me another two-year deal. So, so I essentially, because I was getting into my late twenties, early thirties back uh, back then, and um, I thought, right, I've got, I can either stay at the Warriors for one year and play lower grades, because P, PJ, well, we know how good PJ Marsh is. He played State of Origin. Um, I'd play in reserve grade, or or I could go to the the South Sydney Rabbitohs and get two years and an extra year. So um, yeah, it was yeah, I was I was I was absolutely shattered that I had to make that decision that I had to leave the Warriors. Um, very very sad. We made the, our first semi final in two thousand and one, and I thought oh, I would have loved to have stayed and been part of that success. That obviously we made the Warriors made the grand final, beaten by obviously the Roosters in two thousand and two, but. Yeah, you, there was momentum there and it would have been nice to stay, but then, like, I suppose I was being selfish in that I wanted another year on my contract, so having a two-year contract rather than just the one and playing reserve grade at the, the Warriors, or a lot, a majority of reserve grade, I'd probably, I'd have to say. Ivan Cleary, um, who was a highlight for us then, and you know him very well too, being a, a brother-in-law, um, but... The huge contribution he's had at this club as a player, uh, as a coach, the legacy he's left. I mean, how big has that been? And, and, and your thoughts on Ivan and what he's done for the Warriors and, and your time uh, playing alongside him? Yeah, I really enjoyed playing footy with him. Yeah, he's put a lot into that club. Uh, been there twice, uh, once as a player and then a second time as a coach. Um, he's a fantastic guy. Um, well, he's my brother-in-law, so I've got to, I'm paid to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but I think yeah. With the, well, he's help. He's helping the the Warriors now because Andrew Webster was his assistant coach oh. at Penrith. Because I got to meet him out at, or Andrew Webster, and he's a legend, bloke, mate. He's fantastic. You've got a great coach here at the moment, and the the results are coming on the field. So Ivan's still providing for that club, like for the Warriors, yeah. so to speak, because he's given Webby all those ideas on how to coach and obviously, obviously Webby's taken the, the best out, out of Ivan and, yeah, and 
made his own coaching style, so to speak. Do you remember a story back when Natty Wood was going around with his mask? Yes. Do you remember that? And when he actually scared Nathan Cleary? It was, a, it was the screen mask that Natty Wood's had and he was going around scaring people. He scared uh, Kevin Campion and then Campo goes, let's go and get Ivan. Natty's crawled up onto the, up onto the balcony where Na- uh, Nathan's room is. And he was there and he was looking around to try to find so somewhere to walk, to get in and, and scare the crap out of Ivan and back. And um, poor Nathan seen seen him and ran down the stairs and was scared as anything and said, oh, someone's trying to break in, someone's trying to break in. And, uh, yeah, he couldn't sleep for a week, they said. <laughs> Nathan. Doctor, your, your time at the club, if you can sum it up for me, what was it like? Fantastic. Awesome. I was so fortunate. I'm a very, very lucky person. Um, yeah, to meet the Mad Butcher and yourself and, and all those players, um, I get along well with all of you now and will do to the day I die, die, I suppose. But, um, yeah, I can't wait to see you all uh, coming over and and coming over to an old boys, the Jerry Jerry CSU organisers. So I'm looking forward to seeing him too. So Um, Now when you look back and you took the opportunity off Mark Graham, uh, are you glad that you did that? Oh, very much so. That was a... Yeah, that was a sliding door moment because I got to, to play for a, a a great club and got to meet some really good people, like great people, actually. That was a no-brainer, let me tell you. Now that I look back in hindsight, um, fantastic people, fantastic country, um, and, and got some really great friends. Doctor, once a warrior, always a warrior. Mate, I thank you for your time on the field and off the field because you're a real fan favourite, brother. Thank you so much, Mont, and I really appreciate you reaching out and and thanks to everyone for letting me talk to you about my life and my time at the Warriors. Thank you. I'm Mont Beatham. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you again next week for another episode of Once a Warrior. Step up the middle, gets away. Deep. Oh, strong defence, powerful defence there from the Warriors. Deep with another brilliant run. Deep and Dummy Hart. Deep. Jason Deep gets away. Great tackle, Chase Deep. Crunching defence from Jason Deep. Jason Deese will score!